Direct your thoughts to the breath. And evaluate it. Now you notice when you're evaluating it, you're not simply saying, well, this is the way it is, passing judgment and leaving it there. You're also evaluating what can be done with it. If it's not comfortable, what can you do to make it comfortable? There is a potential for comfort here in the breath. There's a potential for a rapture, fullness. It may be hidden, but it's there. And just because it doesn't show itself right now, it doesn't mean that it's not there. One of the knowledges attributed to the Buddha was his knowledge of properties. The word dhatu, Pali, can also mean potential. He could see the potentials in the world. Everything from physical potentials, that's the potential for fire, the potential for water, earth, wind, the potential for space, the potential for consciousness. There are potentials in the mind, like the potential for our sensuality. In other words, it may lie latent. It doesn't take much to provoke it. And it's the fact that we have these potentials, both good and bad, that allows us to practice. You probably know the passage where the Buddha says you look at form, feeling, perception, fabrication, consciousness, and you ask yourself, are they under your control? Can you have them be the way that you want them to be? And the answer is partially. But most people tend to think, well, there's nothing you can do about them. You just got to accept the way they are. and leave them there. But the Buddha's acceptance was not that kind of acceptance. You accept them including their potentials. That means you can do something with them. After all, even though the aggregates are not fully under control, still, as the Buddha said, if people could not develop skillful qualities and abandon unskillful qualities, there would have been no point to his teaching. So we can do something with our perceptions. We can do something with our feelings, with our thought fabrications. Do something with the body, do something with consciousness. That's how we create the path, looking for the potentials we have here. So wisdom isn't simply a matter of accepting things. It's seeing potentials and learning how to develop them in the proper way. Like there's some potentials, like the potential for sensuality, that's something you've got to learn how to get rid of. But there are also good potentials in the mind. Those are the things you want to develop. There's a good potential here in the body. As I said, you can breathe in a way that gives rise to rapture. How, does you, how do you do that? Well, look at the way you breathe. When you breathe out, are you squeezing the breath out? If so, you're stepping all over the potential for fullness. You breathe in, there's a sense of fullness. So try to maintain a sense of fullness even as you breathe out begin to realize the fullness is not so much the fullness of the lungs, it's the fullness of the <coughs> blood vessels, a sense of fullness in the energy of the nerves. Make sure you don't squeeze that. As you allow that to stay from one breath to the next to the next, it builds up. And 
it's like a whole second system of breathing kicks in. The breathing of the nerves, the breathing of the blood vessels. If you learn how to tap into that, you create a sense of fullness very quickly. That should teach you other lessons. There are other potentials in the mind, other potentials in the body. You want to look for them. When we're meditating, on the one hand, we're looking at what we've already got, but we're also trying to make something out of it. What we've got here has potential. So learn to look at it in that way. Someone contacted me recently. They wanted me to do a Zoom meeting with some people in Singapore. And the person sending the email was complaining that all the other ajans they'd had on these Zoom meetings, all they could talk about was the three characteristics, and now you simply have to accept things and just take the world as it is. He says, please say something that shows that we can do something about the world, that we can do something about our minds. And I thought, it's come to that. And the Buddha teaches a path. It's all about what you can do, the potentials that you have within you. And nowadays, saying that goes against a lot of the what's supposed to be dharma that you hear out there. So remember, we do have potentials, and we're here to look for them and to develop them. It's in this sense that conviction in the Buddha's awakening is helpful. He shows what a human being can do. Now, he was a very special human being, but the qualities he had and then he developed were qualities that we all have in potential form. Resolution, ardency, heedfulness. These are things that we already have to some extent, and simply learning how to develop them, make them more consistent, make them more all around. At the same time, we have to watch out for other potentials. There's what the Buddha calls latent tendencies in the mind. He one time asked the monks what they knew about the five lower fetters, and one monk listed the five lower fetters. Uncertainty, grasping at habits and practices, identity view. Sensual passion, it will. And the Buddha says, Can you say that babies have those? They don't have the full blown fetters. After all, they don't even have the concept of identity, so how could they have an identity view? They don't have the concept of Dharma, so how could they have uncertainty about the Dharma? They don't even have a concept of habits, so how can they grasp at habits and practices? But, he said, they do have the potential. They have a latent tendency. What that means is when the child gets old enough to have these concepts, The fetters will come. They'll show themselves. Which means that when you cut the fetters, you can't just rest content with having them not appear. You have to dig down inside to see what they come from, where the potential comes from. You've got to cut that. I mean, that's the whole message of the Four Noble Truths. 
If you're going to get rid of something you don't like, you've got to find the cause, the potential that gives rise to it. Only then can you be safe from it. But there are also good potentials. We read about the Buddha seeing that certain people have developed their minds to the point where they're ready for just one Dharma talk and that's all they need. The potential is there. The Buddha could see those potentials too, as when he taught Rahula, and Rahula gained awakening. So the Buddha saw the world as potentials. Which is why he was able to make something good out of the world, establish the religion, establish the Dharma and the Vinaya, make it available to people so that they too could put an end to suffering. So as you sit here and meditate, ask yourself, what are the potentials that are here? There'll be some bad ones, but there'll also be some good ones. Why stew around in the bad ones? Why encourage them? The word they use in Pali, provoke. Why provoke them? Provoke the good ones. Starting with something as simple as the breath. The way you breathe can have a huge impact on how you experience the body. So evaluate what you've got. But then also value what can you do with it, and then go ahead and experiment until you found what those potentials are. You will have developed a skill, and you take advantage of the potentials that you have all around you. As John Lee once said, "This is the shame with the human race. We have so many potentials in the body and the mind, and we hardly." Eat scratch them at the surface. There is the potential for awakening. There's the potential for unbinding. That's to be found in here, too. So learn how to look at what you've got in such a way that you can take advantage of the potentials that it has. Don't rest yourself content with saying, well, that's just the way it was. Causes and conditions made it that way. The fact that there are causes and conditions means that they can be manipulated. They can be nurtured in a good direction. That's why the Buddha taught about them. He was interested in just talking about this is the way the world is. He's more interested in showing this is what can be done with the world, so that you go beyond it. <laughs>